Bitcoin has been on an uptrend and, well, quite honestly, in a fantastic month, typically for a lot of assets being the month of October. Typically, you see this kind of rally happen leading up to midterm elections as a highly pivotal part of the year for specifically the United States. Now, outside of that, there's a lot of other crypto news to discuss, to dive into today. Some of it highlighting that finally Bitcoin futures surpassed over $1 trillion in September, which simply only spells more volatility as we come into the end of this year. And Charles Hoskinson also is bullish on the overall concept of Bitcoin. He's stating that the outside of its main chain that it will continue to increase in adoption will be used by all dApps smart contracts in even nation states and even more what is on fire is terra classic or luna classic in fact with the partnership with binance binance has now completed its first lunc burn and has roughly burned about 5.5 billion LUNC tokens valued at about $1.8 million. But oddly enough, that's not the biggest burn that we'll discuss within this video. And honestly, it was with the fact that Peter Schiff called out Michael Saylor for saying that he pumps more crypto than Kim K herself. So a lot of news to unpack in today's video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe if you enjoy content like this all i ask in return is you smash the like button but without further ado let's jump into the news for oktoberfest or october obviously bitcoin has officially topped over twenty thousand. right now it's sustaining that level so what does that mean and what is in store for the month of october october and the couple of months following as we get into midterm elections in november obviously the fall in bond yields recovery in the equity markets signals of waning inflation sent the crypto markets higher however the tokens did not go soaring as fears over the worst are not over yet. The volumes of Bitcoin trading surge about 30% as the worst 31.7 billion exchanged in the hands in the last 24 hours. Now, obviously, there's a lot of volume starting to flow in, a lot of historical kind of expectations being expected over the month of October leading into November, whether this will be a short term rally and will sustain only time will tell. But what has been sustaining is the constant drop of BTC on exchanges. In fact, the, you can see from this chart here that the BTC on exchanges falls below 9% for the first time since November of 2018. So as overall supply drops on exchanges, means they have to buy back oftentimes enough Bitcoin to continue to provide liquidity. And obviously, when people take Bitcoin off exchanges, it's obviously seen as a very positive thing and still continual of the part of the movement of not your peas, not your crypto. Now, what's also been increasing significantly is the Bitcoin hash rate. Uh, in this article by Crypto Briefing, they constantly, day after day, the Bitcoin network just constantly hits new areas of just overall network growth and alongside of that difficulty, may, making the amount of Bitcoin mined much more hard and much more difficult to achieve and at the same time making it therefore more potentially valuable to those who do get to mine the Bitcoin. Now, as you can see right now, the current Bitcoin hash rate is about 242 uh, exahashes currently, which is an insane amount of network difficulty. But a lot of this has also been growing over the time of the bear market, possibly due to a lot of these mining companies acquiring more miners at cheaper costs and some of them starting to still fulfill, get their orders fulfilled that they originally purchased six months ago. Now, What's interesting is this has been an insanely great month for all of the mining companies, even though you saw in a video that we talked about earlier about Compute North going bankrupt alongside of other cryptocurrencies struggling. And as long as the Bitcoin price stays down or stays struggling, you could possibly continue seeing that. But if Bitcoin prices recover, then a lot of these 
companies that have increased their overall operations are going to extremely benefit. You can see Bitcoin Miner Riot increased hash rate by 16.7% in September. Uh, Bitcoin Miner CleanSpark post 21% hash rate growth in September. And HUT H stock rallied after 277 Bitcoin generated in the month of September. So across the board, a lot of these companies increasing their operations, doubling down during the bear market, as typically that is the time to grow. But the Bitcoin network hash rate isn't the only thing on the rise. In fact, the overall Bitcoin holders continues to rise day after day. According to this overall graph, you can see that over 42 million addresses are currently holding Bitcoin, 4.5 million more than just even a year ago. And that goes to show you that there's even more people holding Bitcoin, not at a time where Bitcoin's at 40, 50, $60,000, but when it's one third, one fourth of those prices. And so it just speaks very bullishly for the overall out outlook of where Bitcoin is headed uh, and the overall adoption of Bitcoin itself. Now, the one thing that um, a lot of us weren't expecting to reach full adoption is of, uh, well, Elon Musk renewing his original agreement to buy Twitter. Now, on this news, uh, <laughs> the Doge token decides to pump 8% based on some speculation that Elon said not too long ago about charging 0.1 Doge per tweet. Now, whether something like this would actually transpire, he had previously mentioned charging 0.1 Doge per tweet or comment would be interesting. I don't foresee that being the case, but I could see if Elon was to integrate Doge as a certain type of currency within the app itself. Like if you're paying for Twitter Blue or for specific things within Twitter for your own either community or your own profile, there could be some integration that way, but it just seems a little far-fetched that every Twitter user would have to pay uh, in Doge, uh, although that would be ironically mass adoption in many ways, but I don't foresee that being logistically all too feasible. But at the same time, you know, a lot of us didn't expect for something like this to come out. It just got dropped a few minutes ago about Elon going back to buy Twitter. A lot of people thought that was a done deal that he had walked away from it, but now he has renewed his interest and has uh, pro the proposal was submitted in a letter to Twitter's board of directors, and he's buying it for the same initial share price that he quoted earlier. So it's very interesting to see this whole 180 from Elon on his stance and position to buying Twitter. Now, one person that hasn't done a quite 180 is Peter Schiff. And Peter Schiff is now uh, you know, slapping back at uh, Michael Saylor after he says that Michael Saylor pumps crypto more than Kim K herself. And uh, we, we talked about this in yesterday's video, talking about the allegations and the fees that Kim K had to pay for the pumping of Ethereum Max and the details behind that story. But uh, obviously, a lot of people know Michael Saylor as a massive bull behind Bitcoin, a massive believer in its future, and one that constantly uh, tweets about it on his Twitter, which could, for some people, be seen as a form of promotion. But at the same time, you know, when like a, a half of your company is completely focused on Bitcoin in and of itself. It's almost runs in his veins. Uh, and so it's very interesting. Obviously, there are some people that really like Michael. There's some people that don't like Michael. But in the end, uh, I don't foresee a lot of people agreeing with his statement of selling your house and mortgaging your house uh, to buy Bitcoin back when Bitcoin is much back in the bull run of 2021. So there's obviously been some controversial things Michael Sellers said, but overall, um, it's interesting to see where Peter Schiff stands on his overall opinion of Michael Schiff and comparing him to Kim Kardashian. Now, Terra Classic has been in the news constantly over and over again as if the overall Terra Luna collapse wasn't enough news just a few months ago. It continues to have a rekindling of a flame as time continues. In fact, Terra Classic has been pumping because of a partnership within Binance or Binance has agreed to burn Terra Luna or LUNC tokens that has caused a massive spike in overall Luna 
token price and the burn saw about 5.5 billion LUNC valued at about $1.8 million taken out of circulating supply by the exchange. Accordingly, the burn fees came from trades conducted between September 21st and October 1st. So following the Terra implosion in May, the token crashed in hyperinflation by over 100%. Despite most users exiting the ecosystem, some members stayed and have been attempting to revive the network by introducing schemes that reduce the token's bloated supply. If you understand kind of how and why uh, Terra Luna did collapse and the whole economics behind it, you would know why they're trying to burn the token in order to decrease the overall circulating supply to therefore increase the overall value of Luna. And so this whole down deathward down spiral, they're trying to unspiral in order to revive a project that many would have considered to be um, a Ponzi project. Obviously, people are going to be on both sides of the spectrum, depending on their opinion of Luna. But so when you still have Doquan supposedly not on the run from authorities on this whole situation in South Korea, it's very interesting to still see members backing and lunatics backing, as they call themselves, the Terra Luna ecosystem without their founder. Now, what's interesting is another project that is yet without its founder is Litecoin. Now, a lot of people either love or hate Litecoin or absolutely see no reason for it if they are absolute Bitcoin uh, enthusiast. And so the problem and the benefit that you have within Litecoin is it really just lives in Bitcoin shadow, even though some may consider it the silver to gold and Litecoin to be the, the silver to Bitcoin. Now, the only thing that really is a benefit to Litecoin is, well, quite honestly, not a lot of publicly traded companies or Bitcoin mining companies mine Litecoin. So the overall competition and the overall network difficulty to mine Litecoin doesn't increase as drastically as it does with Bitcoin. And therefore, really, it's not as valuable in many ways either. And what's been solved with the high fees or the transactionary issues within Bitcoin with the Bitcoin Lightning Network was at one point what Litecoin was created for. And now that it's kind of losing its overall purpose, there are some that have lost its, their overall appeal in what Litecoin can provide. But uh, one of the things that Litecoin has been doing is they've been making improvements in their existing technology. And they recently announced a MWeb feature that would allow users to make more confidential transactions. The only concern that some have within Litecoin is that it has been delisted from some major exchanges in Asia due to its privacy feature. And that is one of the things that Litecoin is focusing on specifically. That's well, quite honestly, others are concerned about with regulation coming in alongside of other privacy coins such as Monero. Now, when we talk about some of the controversial cryptos out there and ones that either people absolutely love or hate, one of those is Ripple. And Ripple most recently was listed in CB's Insights Most Promising Fintech Companies Globally. Now, obviously, you have a lot of people who are big into XRP. Personally, myself, I'm a big fan of XRP Ledger and not really all part of the whole XRP army, but I do see the value in the XRP Ledger and some of the benefits that inherently can provide for the ecosystem. Obviously, very exciting to see uh, Web3 and crypto being included alongside of a lot of web two and current technologies in a list similar to this but overall pretty exciting if you are a ripple fan or you're part of the xrp army and that is it folks that brings you up to speed with everything currently going on in the crypto market some of the big things for bitcoin some of the altcoins uh the bitcoin mining companies a lot of exciting things happening for october october Pumptober, whatever terminology some people are going to create down the road. But if you enjoy content just like this, I appreciate the time you've taken to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, smash the like for the YouTube algorithm. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.